Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Skyrim Special Edition modded. We're here with Arturius the Blacksmith, and he's a homeowner now. We are a homeowner. And not only that, business is going really well. I've got a perch up here where I can sit and watch the marketplace goings on. It's uh, early in the morning right now. It is uh, just before business hours, but... I just want to keep an eye on things and make sure our new employee, Koznak, I want to make sure he gets to work on time. And while we're doing that, you may have noticed, Arturius, what happened to your bow? I got a new bow. I've upgraded to a new type of war bow and uh, put a lot of effort into it. It's got a uh, dark wood lacquer finish over the, you know, the standard war bow look with a little bit of some gold inlays there befitting of someone who is moving up in the world also look at the lacquered wood quiver that we have there for our new arrows we're using darit arrows my apologies if i'm pronouncing that wrong because that's pronunciation is uh, not my strong suit sometimes but we also got a new axe check it out this is our new axe it is a war axe. It's a Northman's war axe. I didn't make this axe. I actually happened upon some uh, Thalmor, dreaded Thalmor, and they were fighting with some Stormcloak soldiers. And this was on one of the Stormcloak soldiers. And the Thalmor agents there weren't interested at all in any of the loots. So I got some loots. And let me just stand over here in a safer place, and I'll show you what this guy looks like. Uh, can I do that? Yeah. So yeah, I like this axe. It's really cool. And also, we uh, upgraded our hunting knife. We're now using an ebony hunting knife. And uh, I really like the leather sheath there that it has for it. And it's a, it's a really cool knife. Uh, especially, it even says so in the name. It says, for the hunting knife, where is it? A knife that is very good for skinning. It is strangely, unnervingly cool to the touch. So, that's our new hunting knife. I really like it. That's a really cool model. It's a very nice uh, one. We actually did make this one. Uh, this is the first time I actually made a hunting knife. Uh, the other ones that I had before, the Elven one and the... Uh, what was the one I had before that? I think it was the steel one. Uh, those were actually purchased. This one we made. So uh, the house is still not done quite yet. The workers are still inside doing some work to the house. So we're not going to work on that. But I'm going to change clothes. I want to change into some uh, town clothes. And uh, I got us an, a new outfit as well. We're now using the... Uh, this is my casual clothes and if you've ever played uh, other uh, fantasy role-playing video games you may recognize uh, this armor from uh, one of those and I really like it I think it looks pretty cool and it actually is the correct armor that goes with the boots that we've been wearing so I'm just gonna stick with that but we're on our way we have somewhere to go we are going over to speak to Bothella over at the Hags Cure but before we do, I'm going to stop by the market just to make sure. Now, I've been checking out some of the properties around Markarth here. And uh, there's not that many for sale. So I think we might try to do some uh, investing into our real estate and uh, see if we can get that going. But we're going to head down now to the uh, market square. And I hear people doing business down there. And I, I'm pretty sure Kosnek is already at work and doing his thing so let's go check on him and see how he's doing whoa 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 Kostak, here. look at you where did you get that outfit you look Still amazing here. you look amazing is that your is that your salesman's outfit yeah you Still look great How's business? Let me uh, let me check your pockets. What do you need to take? 
So it's uh, just after opening, and we've already made 225 septums. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, just to let you guys know, we are keeping this place stocked up here, and I put a whole bunch of uh, crafted uh, items in here uh, along with the found ones. I made a bunch of uh, Nordic gear and some different swords and things like that. And uh, I actually am using those to decorate the, uh, the home as well. So uh, I'll be showing you that before the end of the episode as well. But anyway, let's get up. So why are we going over to see uh, Bothella? If you guys remember back a while ago, I stumbled upon a claw. And that claw had a curse of binding on it. Well, we also recently stumbled upon a sword. And the sword also had a curse of binding on it. And my man here doesn't feel very comfortable walking around with all this extra weight of stuff. Uh, just gonna just gonna stop by here real quick. Hi, Corza. Good morning. May your weapons be sharp and your prey fresh. And you as well. Malibu so. And Malakath preserve you, sweetheart. All right. Uh, it seems like to me she's starting to take a shine to us after all this time, and uh, I'm pretty happy about that. So let's head on up here to uh, speak to Bethella. I believe she should be open now, and she has sent word that she has a cure or a possible cure for our curse. For our unfortunate curse of binding. Good morning. Hello, friend. So uh, I heard you came up with something that might help us out for our curse good of binding. Good it's good to see you too. What do you say? Well, look at you. If only everyone acted like you did. Now you let me know if you need a cure. Yes, yes, I do need a cure. I do need a cure. See, I, I this is what we spoke about. I have this problem, you know, I have this claw that's uh, stuck in my inventory and I can't get rid of it and uh, trying to sleep with this thing. Can you imagine trying to sleep with one of these things in your pocket and not being able to put it down? And besides that, we, ca we came across this glowing red sword and it really freaks me out. And I haven't even been sleeping very good ever since I found it. So I really want to get rid of it. Is there anything you can do for us? The Hag's Cure is here for all your discreet needs. <laughs> that, my friends, is what I like to hear. So, a bit of old reach magic can cure whatever ills you. Oh, okay. So, uh, so is this it? Is not this scared of an old woman now? Are you? Oh no, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. So, is this the uh, is this the potion that you made for us? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, I'll go ahead and take it. And uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? Why wait? Let's just go ahead and see if it works. Uh, unknown potion. Gosh, I hope it's not. Uh, I hope it's not poison. I'm gonna go ahead and drink it. Okay. Well, it actually kind of tasted like snowberries a little bit, um, but I didn't feel anything. Uh, and there wasn't any of those glowy things that normally happens, like when I drink a health potion. Um, let's, uh, let's test it out. Let's see if it worked. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Look at that, you guys. Look. We did it. We cured ourselves of our curse of binding. That is terrific. Bethella, in return for your services, I would like to gift you with this emerald claw here while I throw everything uh, around all over your... Yes, I will put it down. I'll just put it right here. How about that? And I'm just going to make sure that that is locked into place. <laughs> I don't want it to fall through the scenery or anything it's like here. that. And then uh, I'll fix that plate back later, but you totally can have that. Oh, yeah, and the sword. Let me see. Did that work as well? Uh, can we get rid of the sword now? Oh, Bothella, you are my hero. 
You are my hero. You've totally cured us from our curse of binding. Thank you so much. Thank you come, so much. Okay, so you take the claw. I think that's uh, I think that's an appropriate uh, trade Me for payment. Too. And uh, if we come across any more of those items like that, I really hope that Let's you'll be able it. to uh, to help us out. So. I'll go ahead and, and uh, now that I can store that somewhere, mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and take it with me and store it away somewhere. So uh, what do you think about that, you guys? We got rid of our Curse of Binding after all this time. I'm so happy. All right. So uh, let me give you a little tour on the progress of the house, and uh, I'll beat you back over there in just a second. All right, guys. We're back. We're here in front of our house in uh, Markarth. Vlindril Hall and we put a couple of planting boxes out here with some uh, decorations just to nice things up a little bit and why don't you guys come on in we'll go inside and I'll show you what we came up with so we've done a lot of different stuff with the house here uh, we've changed up the entrance way uh, I've, I've increased the lighting slightly We've got a tanning rack right over here, and the tanning rack is hooked up to our automatic storage. Uh, and we just used our same automatic storage, uh, our little magic fish, like we did over in the left-hand mine. We've got some planters in here with some nice uh, harvestable ingredients and things like that, and some very nice-looking lights. Uh, I really am a lot happier about the lighting situation now. Now, one thing I noticed was is uh there's this object over there and i kind of like to steer clear of it because it's a very mysterious object do you see it there it's it's uh i don't want to get too close to it it always freaks me out uh whenever i get close to it look it, it it's like it it's like it has some sort of a light altering effect and it causes the lights to flicker and uh change and it has an effect on this room for some reason if I go over here, see that? See how the lights just changed as I move around? So that thing totally freaks me out. And uh, I've been trying to get used to it um, being there. And I definitely, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to do anything with it. But uh, but yeah, so here's the main hall. And uh, we're having another little bit of an issue. And that is uh, Vorstag likes to play tricks on me. Uh, they've been hanging out in here. And, and he likes to move my dummies around. So every time I come in here, I get freaked out and I get scared because I think uh, this is some guy. Uh, once he even moved this guy who's wearing our set of ebony armor that we found. He once moved this guy all the way over in there uh, into the corner of that room and uh, <laughs> totally freaked me out. So in the main hall here, this is where we uh, have guests uh, for meals and, and uh, discussions and things like that. Business clients and... Uh, other things and uh, when I'm here all alone this is my kind of business corner so I, I take care of the books over here and uh, we've got ourselves a shrine of Zenithar if you guys didn't know that's our patron uh, deity Zenithar who is the god of labor and work and making money and we've been uh we've been a follower of zenithar since the very beginning and see we have our amulet of zenithar as well we had that from very early on but uh i just want to show you these couple of uh uh safes over here this one on the bottom is where i keep all of our jewels and treasures so these are there's the leviathan amethyst if you guys remember that from very early on and then we all 30 carat all 30 carat gems i'm keeping in here i won't i don't want to use these to craft with so anything less than 30 carats won't make it into here um also some interesting pieces of jewelry that we found from time to time that look quite uh valuable and interesting uh as well as i don't know if you noticed that our fate cards i'm keeping those in here as well and then, not that they're terribly valuable, but these are real treasures for me. And that is our fossil collection. So, as we've done tons of mining, we've, we've ended up finding all sorts of these 
really interesting fossils and I'm thinking I might even set up a little display area uh, with some of these around the house um, then the in the uh, top safe here this is where we're keeping our gold notes and our coin and let me just show you what we've got so far uh, now the math isn't going to work out work out right if you look at my ledger uh, because we're a couple of days after I did my last update on the ledger but we're still at six gold bullion uh, three of those came from the statue of Debella we've got 30 count them 30 East Empire Company notes each one is worth 5,000 and we now have 57,000 in merchant guild notes along with I'm stashing away 88,000 coin right now so as you can tell business is quite good uh, let's take a look at the ledger since I mentioned it and um, let's see the last entry was on the 17th I believe it's now the 20th so only 10 more days until the end of month and I still have to get the taxes figured out so two days ago or when I did this uh, or three days ago we had 400 coin 30 of the East Empire and 57 so that hasn't changed and we have the six gold bullion our uh, total profit so far we're at 255,483 and then we had around with the house the horse cart hiring uh, Vorstag upgrading the house paying the workers all of those things that came out to about 18,000 uh, coin which meant uh, three days ago we had 237,400 I am fairly certain that if I were to count it now we would be about I want to say this uh, is this is now what's changed so we're about 80,000 or so more than we were three days ago now you might be saying to yourself 80,000 coin in three days well yes I did a little bit of a uh, power coin grab if you will by going around I got my blessing of Xenathar I'm wearing my amulet of Xenathar uh, I gave the uh, beggar Degain downstairs I gave him a coin and got the blessing of uh, charity or the charity's grace I don't, I don't remember what it's called and if you do that and then use your lab skeever perk <laughs> with your uh, with your uh, potions of barter that we're making because we've got a, an extremely high level of alchemy now I went around and made a bunch of potions and used them as uh, monies to trade and I did that for about a week uh, in game uh, so for about seven days or so I alternated around buying up crafting materials and uh, ingredients from Bethella and we just kept racking up coin and the whole time for that whole week Kosnak has been running our market stall so we, as long as we keep that stacked he's making about I want to say depending on how I have it uh, stocked he can make anywhere from 10 to 30,000 somewhere in between uh, in a day in a good day now on a bad day I, I have had a end of day collections of around 1200 so that's actually pretty poor performing day uh, compared to the others but yeah so like I mentioned the rest of the house is still kind of oh, that thing that thing really the rest of the house is still kind of under construction and uh, we're not really doing anything with this room um, and I will show you what I had them install in the bedroom and that is besides lighting uh, we did have them put some lighting in and we'll just take a look here we've got an oven now in our kitchen uh, so that we can uh, bake some tasty goodies and there's Vorstag over there he's in the spare bedroom so here is the master bedroom and we've got the lights a lot better in here I have some lighting now over by the uh, wardrobe and that's where I'm keeping all of my personal gear and then all the spare clothes and things like that I'm keeping in this one and then take a look at this this is so cool uh, I have my very own tub I have a bathtub because you know when you're a blacksmith and you do a lot of uh, blacksmithing stuff and 
and uh, you know you're 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 working really hard and you're running around and you're doing all the business. You get all sweaty, and sometimes you just want to take a bath. So, come on, guys, let's take a bath. Take a bath with me. Uh, I've got a clothes basket here. I just activate the clothes basket, just like that, and uh, stores all my gear away. And uh, here we are, uh, buck naked, and we get in a tub over here. And then in this little tray over here, I have a whole bunch of soaps that I made. And uh, depending on which one, you can get different bonuses. And this is from the mod Keep It Clean. And thanks to the guys over on the Discord server for telling me about this. Because I feel much more confident now whenever I go talk to Gorza. Uh, after I've been doing a lot of smithing. Uh, if I've had a chance to have a bath. And let's see. Dragon's Tongue slightly increases fire resistance and speechcraft. And Lavender does uh, magic resistance and speechcraft. Now, you guys know how much I hate mages. So, and I'm a business person. So, I definitely, those those are a couple of my favorites. And then when I'm going hunting, I really like to use the plain soap. Because, you know, you don't want to use a bunch of uh, flowery scented things uh, when you're going hunting. So, this has a neutral scent. And will raise your sneak ability by masking your scent. So I think what we're going to do today, though, is uh, let's go for a little bit of some dragon's tongue. And I will just use one of those, one of those, one of those. Come on, cursor. Where are you? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, what a derp. Okay, so we have some soap now. And look at that, you guys. We're getting all sudsy and there's, there's bubbles. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Are we clean? We look clean. Gosh, Artorius, you are so not a warrior. <laughs> You're so skinny, dude. <laughs> but I think that fits for us. We're That's a proper character for us. And then we'll go ahead and just get dressed again here. And that's all there is to it. And I got to always do a little bow because uh, I'm feeling pretty good about things. <laughs> what do you guys think about that i love it okay so everything else is pretty much vanilla uh one of the things that's interesting i also can use this water to fill my water skins if i need to uh so i always make sure that after my bath and uh, i'll do this when you guys aren't around but i always change the water out to make sure it's nice and clean so that i can uh, use it as a, 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 a drinking well as well now there's some other things that you can do to keep from doing it i can actually craft a uh a water barrel or a water keg and uh i'll probably do that so that <laughs> so that i don't have to drink my bath water that's that sounds kind of disgusting doesn't it but anyway you guys that's the house but i want to show you the pace de resistance we gotta go to the crafting area over here because we are artorius the blacksmith and this is where we're going to spend the majority of our time in here in this area. So take a look. We upgraded our grindstone. Our grindstone is now the advanced version. And we also did the advanced version of the uh, alchemy table here. I've got auto storage set up for my alchemy ingredients. So those can get automatically stored away. Then when we go to do our alchemy, it automatically goes into our inventory. And then when we're done, it goes back again. I mentioned the Lab Skeever perk. That perk is from the uh, alchemy tree, of course. But the way it works is when I'm finished using my alchemy table for a very, very short time. I think maybe only just a few seconds. If I hurry up and drink a potion, it'll be like... 30% better of a potion and it'll last for like uh, 10 real life minutes so it increases the duration I do that I use the table I quit and then I grab a uh, blacksmithing potion um, smithing potion see these are 44% 45% better and then by the time I do the lab skeever thing I've basically got 50 some odd better uh smithing for upgrading weapons and armor and i can actually just take my time i don't have to hurry and run over after drinking the potion and i can do a whole lot of armor and things like that 
So this whole area over here is for alchemy. This whole area over here is for uh, the smithing. And as you can see, I've got my axe there. That's our axe. I'm not going to ever get rid of that. That's our our axe that we've been using pretty much from the beginning. I mean, except for I upgraded it from uh, uh, iron axe to a steel axe. And then our war, our Warbo Arts Warbo uh, Legendary now. Uh, if I can see the... Uh, <laughs> there it is. No, nope, that's the axe as well. <laughs> so all the little hitboxes are so hard to see. But anyway, that's our bow. And uh, here's just another bow that I made uh, because I've been practicing. And this guy is super rare. You guys, the, uh, the refined malachite is very rare. Making glass weapons uh, with the Borolut uh, tables is very difficult. Uh, as well as I realized finally after some time it didn't make me uh, much sense for me this early on to take the ebony smithing perk. Because we can't make it, we can't make ebony armor and ebony weapons. We can make some ebony stuff, uh, things that aren't considered uh, full on ebony, but if all the vanilla stuff is is now considered super rare. There's only two places in the world, so I have heard, that you can craft ebony weapons and armor. One of them is in White Run, which is down here. They have a special forge near your Vesker. It's called the Sky Forge. Uh, Gorza was telling me about it. She has a friend that's been there before. And then again, uh, Orc Love over here at Nalzulbur. I mentioned to you guys earlier that they have an ebony mine. And there is a, uh, a smithing place over there. It's called the Gloombound Smithy. Uh, again, thanks to Gorza and my other Orc Bloodkin for letting me in on that. Those are the only two places in all of Skyrim that you can make ebony weapons and armor. So we definitely are going to Narzulber at some point. But anyway, so uh, yeah, so when the workers were in here uh, fixing things up, they totally messed this whole area up. This area over here was all magic-y and stuff, and that just wouldn't do. So we got rid of all the, all the uh, magic-y stuff. There was some funky table that had like some blue, like witchcraft writing stuff on it. So we just we I destroyed it. I just did just got rid of it. I told them to take it out with the garbage. Uh, so in the place of it, we have over here a uh, armor and weapons storage crate that I'm keeping some spare stuff in that I don't necessarily want to throw uh, into the uh, market stall. And then for odds and ends, miscellaneous items down here. I just been sticking arrows in there for now, but there's some spaces here for other stuff and and the display. The display is what I'm all about. I wanted to place where we could display stuff. So look at all of our these are swords that you guys have seen before that we made in previous episodes. Here's a couple that really cool ones that we found on Forsworn. Those weren't made. Those were not crafted. Those were found. And then all the rest of this stuff I crafted. And uh that is an amazing, what is it called? It's an ornate maul. This is the skull double axe. You guys saw this one before, the thresher maul. And then we've got our fancy shield, the shield of Kavach, which is really cool. And uh, we replaced the uh, standard steel swords there with some really cool sword of Augustus. Uh, you guys know I'm all about the imperial stuff. Now I did leave this one alone. This has some regular steel swords and a uh, steel shield because I think it's important for you to remember your roots. you got to remember where you started and where you came from. And uh, this is a constant reminder to stay humble and, uh, you know, and don't get too uh, cocky. But speaking of cocky, look at these badass blades over here. Look at this noble claymore. Look at that. Can you guys see that? Look at that texture. Look at that craftsmanship. I don't mind tooting my horn on that. I did a good job on that. And I made this one too. This is a tombstone ceremonial. This is my wall of great swords over here. So these are all great swords. This one's really cool. Look at this. The Knight's Claymore. And uh, again, I think I've said this several times before. Whoever comes up with these models and does this, uh, these models and then shares it for free for us to use. 
may the divine smile on you, my friend, uh, forever and ever. So we've got this one up here called Fury. These are all great swords, and they are really, really cool looking. I, I thought they were too cool to sell. So I made two, just about two of each of them, and I have the spares stored away over here because I'm still not sure if I feel like parting with such fine weapons down at the market stall. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to be just about it for this area. Oh, one more thing. Uh, this blade over here is really, really cool as well. This is based on what I believe is uh, some Akaviri uh, text that I read that mentioned that they had uh, curved, curved, curved blades uh, in the uh, Akaviri uh, time. And so I've made this after that style uh, of, of my, this is my interpretation of what I believe the Akaviri weapon would look like and then this guy over here too this one is not finished yet i'm still working on it i've been working on doing some more engraving here i'm really working on my engraving skills trying to get better see i've got uh, i just started here on the blade and i'm thinking i want to take this carving and and go all the way up but isn't that cool war sword of the golden army i'm calling that one and then i've also got a couple of little uh uh things storage containers over here for miscellaneous doohickeys and uh, thingamabobs uh, so i don't have anything in there right now but i'm sure there always will be something hey vigilance how are you buddy how you doing are you excited are you excited that i'm taking the peeps on a tour oh you are you're such a good boy you're such a good boy come on you're gonna come with me because we got somewhere to go we're gonna go vorstag Vorstag, where are you? Vorstag, we're going to go. We're going to go see the Jarl. Yes, that's right. We have been summoned by the Jarl once again. Are we heading up? Yes, we are. we got to go see the Jarl. Right. Uh, what time was our appointment? Oh, gosh. We're, our appointment was around noon, and it's already 11. I hope we're not going to be late. Okay, let's get going, you guys. Let's go. I, let's hurry. Oh, wait. I should change clothes as well. Let me go back in, get back into my business gear. Uh, all right, I'll do that, and then we'll meet you guys at the Understone Keep. Look how happy I am. Look how I can't even stop smiling. I'm so happy. All right, I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, you guys, we're back, and uh, the Jarl, as normal, is it, really busy. They're all out there having their discussions and things like that, but uh, I wanted to bring Vorstag with me, and I wanted to bring uh, 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 Vigilance as well. And I think if we have another follower, we're going to have to make sure their name starts with a V the so I can... Know how to deal with well, good for you, dude. I'm glad you do. Anyway, yeah, I was just making a joke about all the V names. So let's go ahead and head on up and see what... The Dawn God. Vampire hunters or something. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I forgot to tell you guys about that. I totally got approached by some orc and he tried to get me to join some cult has something to do with the guarding the dawn or something like that. I totally ignored him. Anyway, my Jarl, I'm here. I am uh, back again at your behest. And please let me know what I can do for you. Good to have you by my side, friend. I need reliable people around. I'm very pleased that you feel that way about me, uh, uh, that I am reliable. And you have my word. Anything I can do for you. Just let me know. Then by my right as you are, I name you Thane of the Reach. Congratulations. I grant you a personal house card to watch over your home, and this weapon for my armory to serve as your badge of office. I'll also notify my guards of your new title. Wouldn't want them to think you're part of the common rabble now. <laughs> my Jarl, I am totally honored and Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this honor. And uh, I hope to do a great service and to live up to the title of Thane of Markarth. All right, guys. I'm Arturius the Blacksmith, and we're a Thane now. Thane of Markarth. How cool is that? Things are growing really well these days. Oh, gosh. I hope that doesn't mean something bad's going to happen soon. Anyway, I've had a great time this episode hanging out with you guys, and I hope you guys are enjoying the way things are going for Arturius, and we will...
talk to you later. I'm see you later, guys. We'll see you later. I'm fame now. <laughs>